The movie Am I Racist by Matt Walsh is a comedic documentary where Walsh goes undercover to expose the DEI experts who claim that America is inherently racist for their own gain. Having seen the movie, I want to spend some time reviewing some of the positive things that Walsh does, discussing two main criticisms I've seen people use against the movie, adding some critiques of my own, and then answering the ultimate question when it comes to movies, do I think it's worth your time? I'm Matthew Murphy, and this is Harold from the North. Before I dive in, I want to make sure the people who don't like it when the story they're about to read or watch is spoiled for them have a chance to bow out until after they've seen the movie. While I mostly plan to talk about themes and methods that are used in the movie and to keep the spoilers light, if you're wanting to see it with totally fresh eyes, now's your chance to stop, go see the movie, and then come back and I'll be able to share my thoughts. Starting off with the positive, the best aspect of the movie is by far the interviews. There's lots of different approaches and scripted situations that Walsh uses in the movie to help with comedic effect, but the comedy on its own would be insufficient without the conversations. The reason his last movie, What is a Woman, was so insightful was because he spent the majority of the movie letting people freely speak on their perspectives and opinions. And I think this movie is no different. We can claim to know what the average person thinks about an issue by looking at polls and speculating, but it's far better to hear it straight from the person. And when someone like Walsh claims that the left is using DEI and racism as a grift, they can simply deny it and make excuses. But as Walsh discovered, if you simply let them talk, they're more than happy to say the quiet part out loud for you. The interview showed the incoherency of the arguments that the DEI experts use to get people to act how they want. Right off the bat, at the beginning of the movie, Walsh attends a white guilt seminar where the speaker claims that every time she's in a room full of white people, she's putting herself in danger. But the classes that she runs are meant to educate white people about their privilege, which means that she's making her career out of putting herself in a room specifically with white people, which is not what people do when they actually believe they're at risk of physical harm. She didn't even have security, which is evidenced enough by the fact that they called the cops on Walsh when they found out who he was. In another interview, a woman claiming to be an anti-racism expert claims that it's racist for kids to prefer white princesses over more diverse options, but then in the next breath says it's racist if Walsh lets his daughter dress up as Moana for Halloween. And as Walsh points out to her, no matter what choice you make in that situation, you still end up back at racism. There's even a scene where Walsh gains access to a dinner with non-white hosts that invites white women to pay thousands of dollars per person to attend and then spends the whole time claiming that America oppresses people who aren't white. These are all clearly untenable stances to take, but instead of calling out these poor arguments, everyone's so scared of being called racist that they're guilted into trying to follow the advice of these alleged experts, all the while making them extremely wealthy for their trouble. Speaking of which, that brings me to the next important feature of the interviews, the money. Before each interview, the movie shows how much each interviewee asked to be paid to have them in the movie. The prices range anywhere from a couple thousand dollars up to $50,000. And Walsh said that adding the price tag of the interviews shows the motivation behind the people who, who make this their living. It's not some moral conviction that drives them to passionately address real problems facing our culture. It's just a scam to profit off of people's fear and guilt. They know that if they can sell the lie that everyone and everything is racist, but they can probably also sell the lie that they're the only ones with the solution. And you could try to argue, as some have, that if they really believe what they're saying, then it's not a grift and that they have every right to offer up what they have to make money since that's the very nature of capitalism. But the idea itself can still be a grift even if the people who espouse it are fully bought into it. If I'm paying for a product, I'm assuming that product does in fact do what the advertising claims it does. But the advice these supposed experts give doesn't work which means it isn't worth a single dollar, let alone thousands. And even if the entire anti-racist crowd weren't specifically trying to grift people, if we really believe it, that it's brainwashing to tell someone that America and white people are inherently racist, then somebody had to start that lie. And if it is in fact a lie, then the people who profit off of that lie are still participating in a grift, whether they know it or not. And on top of that, some people act as though not assuming that they're lying and that they're true believers of what they espouse is the kind thing to do, but I entirely disagree. If you want to give them credit and say that they do in fact believe the arguments that they use, but then you believe that these arguments are nonsensical, then you're just saying that the person making the arguments is too unintelligent to know a bad argument from a good one. Personally, I'd rather have someone say that I was lying than assume that I fall for bad arguments. At least then I would have some grand plan instead of being a dullard who was being tricked. 
there are plenty of issues where there are reasonable, logical, and intelligent arguments that are being made by people on both sides. But I think one of the reasons this movie resonates with people is because that type of discussion isn't present. I don't want to give away some of the best parts of the movie, but arguments that are used to manipulate people's emotions and play on their guilt are the main currency of the people he interviews. And they're not simply arguing that racism is a thing and that it's bad. That's obviously true, and most people would have no problem with that statement. They're arguing that America and all white people are racist and oppressive while simultaneously living comfortably in this country and getting rich off of those very people. Instead of actually discussing racism, they either provide answers to problems that are non-existent or they manufacture problems to try to solve. And the people Walsh interviewed aren't cherry-picked fringed voices. They're quite successful and well-known in this sphere. And even for those who are not well-known, those people are still probably aware that being a victim in our culture can be very lucrative, which makes it hard to trust the intentions of anyone who asks for crazy sums of money to talk about racism. So you could say that they've been fooled and that no one has ever challenged these prominent figures of the movement with logical arguments, but I think a far more realistic view to take is that they know if they can convince people of their white guilt, those people will pay most any price to have that weight removed. And after this movie was announced, Many of those experts he interviewed have since deleted their social media and gone into hiding. Which, to me, does not reflect the actions of public figures who are honestly just standing up for what they believe. While the interviews of the alleged experts were wearisome and aggressive, the interviews with the people on the street were a breath of fresh air. Basically, all of the average people Walsh spoke to were bewildered by his obsession with discussing racism. Some pointed out that bringing it up constantly would only exacerbate the problem, and others were dismissive of the questions altogether. These interviews painted a stark contrast between the, quote, experts and what normal people think. They helped to show a world apart from the constant online fear-mongering and outrage, a world where loving one another was the most common response given in the interviews. There was one interview in particular that I found very heartwarming and, to me, was the most moving and influential conversation in the movie. But... I'll speak to that a little bit more later. The other thing I felt worked in the movie's favor was the choice to go with a documentary and comedic style. Certainly a documentary provided the forum for the important interviews, but I also appreciate it as a source that has compiled information into a helpful, easily digestible format. For those of us who spend a lot of time learning about what's going on in the world, this movie felt like a long time in coming. But as I've lamented before, there's such an abundance of news footage and brain rot on the internet that... Basically, no one has the time to sift through it to find the things that are actually relevant and worth talking about. I may have heard of most of the people and situations described in this movie, but that's not true for everyone. There's tons of people out there who have no clue that these crazy ideas and radical people are out there. This is partially because the people who promote the anti-racist grift try to stay just anonymous enough to work without being questioned, but it's mostly because people simply don't have the time or energy to wade into the sludge of the internet for hours to know how unhinged the culture is. Both this movie and What is a Woman provide a good collection of radical positions and people in their respective movements in a way that people feel like they can make time for. Which brings us to the comedy. I can't spend as much time on this as I would like without giving much away, but I'm thankful that they embrace the absurdity of the situation for comedic effect. It would have been very easy to approach this insanity in a serious and aggressive manner that would likely turn a lot of people away. But a comedy makes it open to a wider audience. Not only that, it demonstrates how we should be responding to these claims in real life. We can do more than just criticize and debate over the crazy ideas out there, of which I think is really important, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. But we can also laugh and show that we don't have to take these ideas seriously. With all that said, there were those who were not pleased with the movie for various reasons on both sides of the aisle, and there are two main criticisms I've seen those people use that I thought would be worth exploring. Firstly, people have decried this movie because they feel like attacking the grifters who commercialize the issue of racism will actually downplay it instead of help. And I understand this argument, but I believe it's a little bit misguided. Because from my perspective, this movie wasn't about addressing racism. It was about addressing the corporatized fake racism that's peddled for cash. It's about confronting the people who are actively trying to intensify the racial tension in the culture. And it's actually the principles of DEI that downplay racism by creating racism where there is none and diluting the idea of racism into petty grievances and lies rather than a genuine problem. So if you feel like this movie does a good job taking down that version of racism, you should be buying up tons of tickets for this movie, not boycotting it. 
We can't get any closer to addressing any actual racism when everyone's conception of racism is what the self-proclaimed anti-racist movement says that it is. And I would agree that if people walk away from this movie saying, we solved racism, then they misunderstood the point, but I also don't believe the movie tried to send that message. And it is true that after a major accomplishment, some people can be lulled into thinking that the work is done, like what happened to the pro-life movement after Roe vs. Wade was overturned. But the faux racism isn't going away while people are still able to make money selling it. They have a vested interest in not providing actual solutions because that would take away from their cash flow. The only way to get people to stop giving money to these, quote, experts is to expose their ideas. And like the overturning of Roe, a movie like this can serve as a good first step in the right direction. The second criticism is that people are displeased by the deceptive tactics used to make the movie. This comes mostly from Christians who are uncomfortable with the idea of Walsh going undercover. They say that lying is never okay and that they can't support a movie that uses undercover tactics to, quote, own the libs. The most charitable thing I can say is to echo the words of 1 Corinthians 3 and say that some people require spiritual milk because they're not yet ready to discuss spiritual meat. I would love nothing more than to be able to take everyone in public life who speaks about their beliefs at their word and for all of us to have a productive, genuine discussion that's attempting to find the truth. But unfortunately, we live in reality, and our reality is a broken and sinful one. And because of this, there will always be people who hide their true intentions. And no matter how nicely you ask, they'll continue to lie and deceive people. So my question for Christians who have a problem with these tactics is this. Where is your line? When is it necessary to use tactics that we would discourage in most contexts? Because there's Christians on both sides of this who are saying that they're following scripture when they make that choice, so what is it specifically? I believe that innocence is the foundational principle that should guide all of these discussions. And I obviously don't mean being without sin, because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But just because all sin makes us equally guilty before God, doesn't mean that the way we respond to those sins on earth is exactly the same. Most people would agree that a serial killer or a bank robber needs to be put into prison. But normally, if you put someone in a cage against their will, it would be a sin. So, should we consider jailing people a moral wrong? Or are there exceptions to the rule when people have chosen to give up their innocence? So I ask again, and not rhetorically, where's the line? Some would say that there's an exception when trying to save lives, but that this movie wasn't saving any lives at all. But the goal of this movie was to expose the movement that's inflating the racial tension in our culture. And how many people lost their businesses and lives as the BLM riots were burning cities to the ground? Was that not a result of racial tension? During the riots, the media and politicians were using the same rhetoric as the people in this movie to fan that flame. Would that not be justification enough to go undercover? Or better yet, what if the script was flipped and Walsh made What is a Woman using the same undercover tactics that he did in this movie? That movie exposed the fact that kids and adults alike are falling for an ideology that says if they don't affirm their child's gender preferences, that the child will kill themselves, when in reality, it's the gender ideology that encourages suicidal ideation, not the rejection of it. Would the risk of their lives be justification enough to go undercover? Even if they didn't take their life, many are still taking pills to chemically castrate themselves and voluntarily mutilating themselves with the doctor's help. Would the people who disapprove of the undercover tactics used in this movie consider that reason enough? And I'm not saying all of this to try to make light of the situation or even pretend that it's an easy question to answer. But just like the robber who forfeited his right to freedom when he tried to steal, would it not be reasonable to infer that there are also times where people have sacrificed their right to know the truth? Now that I've covered the positives and other people's critiques that I don't really agree with, I've got some of my own. There are very few movies out there that are perfect, and Am I Racist is no exception. And I realized that all of my critiques stem from the fact that they had a ton of ground to cover. They wanted to take on the DEI grift and make people aware of the racial tensions and obsession in the U.S. in a format that takes a compilation of interviews and scripted bits and turns them into a loose narrative that makes you laugh. Ideally under 90 minutes. It's a daunting task that I feel like they mostly accomplished, but combining all of those elements means that they had to breeze over some aspects of the movie that really could have used more time and keep in aspects that detracted from the overall message and made it not as effective as it could be. As I mentioned earlier, I think the choice to make it a comedy was a good one because it opened the movie to a wider audience, but while most of the humor landed pretty well, it meant that sometimes the comedy took precedent over the other goals that the movie had. One of the main examples of this is the topic of racial hoaxes. 
With the notable exception of the Jesse Smollett hoax, the whole idea of both celebrities and average people creating racial hoaxes to gain attention isn't given a lot of time. Many of these events are mentioned briefly in news segments and other clips, but it's subtle enough that it might not catch the ear of people who don't know anything about this in the same way as somebody who's heard of these events before. And there is an interview with the author who wrote the book Hate Crime Hoax, where he had valuable things to say about how pervasive these hoaxes are in our culture, but since Walsh was in character, it felt like they played it mostly for laughs when I would have liked to have heard from him more thoroughly. And I point this out not just because the reality of race hoaxes deserves far more criticism than it receives, but also because it builds a stronger case against the argument that this isn't a grift. We can never fully know people's intentions because we can't read their minds, but there are only so many fabrications one can read about before it becomes obstinate to say that the DEI experts are not purposely grifting people. And I gave the movie credit for serving as a resource for people to see some of this insanity, but that's mostly because there really isn't any other source like it. If someone is hearing about this for the first time, it would be worth going back and watching it again and listening to the names and events that the movie mentions so that they can go and research some of it for themselves. And I understand that the movie can only cover so much, but this would have helped all the same. The other thing I would have liked to see more of was the section of the movie where Walsh goes around in character asking average people how they felt about America. It was encouraging to see the conversations he had and how thankful and blessed many people felt to be in America. My favorite of these was when Walsh interviews a black business owner who immigrated to America. The man spoke earnestly about how thankful he was for the opportunities that America brought and how we just need to care about each other. And when Walsh asks if he read White Fragility, the man kindly dismisses the idea and says that he only reads his Bible daily. This moment was powerful and heartfelt, and even though Walsh was in character, he held back the persona enough not to ruin the moment for the sake of comedy. All of that was great, but it was far too short. It was a very poignant moment when it lasted, but the movie quickly moves on to more comedic and absurd aspects. I understand the time constraints that they're under, but for me, these interviews are one of the strongest cases Walsh could make against people being oppressed because America is inherently racist, and that racism promoted by the DEI mindset doesn't match reality. And along with that, Walsh is always very blunt and aggressive in his approach to addressing injustices in the world, so having more of this would have allowed people who may be off-put by Walsh's approach to be more open to the argument because of the emotional thoughtfulness of the scenes. It really helps to see the humanity of the different people in our country and how the reality of people's feelings and experiences is very different than what the race baiters would have us believe. All of this to say, I believe that Am I Racist is a movie that's worth your time. If not for its comedic and entertainment value, then for its thought-provoking subject matter. There are a lot of moral and ethical questions that are raised by a movie like Am I Racist, and the fact that it's been widely accepted and successful means that at least some of the messages in it have resonated with the people who have seen it. And it also means that you don't have to agree with everything that Matt Walsh or The Daily Wire says to enjoy the film. Personally, I really liked the movie and I was very entertained. And the main message I took away when I left the theater was not that it owned the libs, but that we should stop being manipulated into obsessing over race. And ironically, if our culture was following the movie's own advice and was not exploiting racial tension, then there would be no racial grift and no need for a movie like this in the first place. But given the success of this movie, that's clearly not the case. Which means that we need to come alongside this movie and continue to do the work of exposing the DEI grift for what it really is. That's all I have for today, but thanks for listening. And until next time, farewell. Thanks for listening. Remember to use the links in the description to follow me on social media and wherever you get your podcasts so that you never miss an episode.